Welcome back to Spank Ranch Garage. It is a beautiful Saturday here at the Spank Ranch. We have a variety of cars to tune. So this Volvo that you saw in previous videos is back. The owner's got it all buttoned up, ready for a tune. So we'll go over a couple things and get this on the rollers in just a little bit. Next up, we got a buddy's E30 powered by BMW M42 Turbo, Mega Squirt, head work, you know, the usual drift deal here. I think it's got 1,000 cc IDs in it, running on E85. This should be an absolute pleasure. Our final car is here today, or maybe final. There might be one more coming. We got a S13 hatch. One of them American thumper motor things. I think it's a 5.3 on a truck ECU. T56 turbines. Uh, tune's all screwed up on it. It's got some tune for big injectors, so we'll have to start from scratch on this one and get her done. All right, let's pull off whatever tune's on this thing and see what we got going on here. All right, Trevor. So all right. that is, the ECU that's in it right now is from mm -hmm. 5.3, right? Uh, when think? I when I scanned it with the auto scanner, it was mm -hmm. a six liter truck. All right, that's fine. It's a truck ECU, but you have LS one injectors. LS one injectors, and it is a five three lower end. Mm -hmm. And we want to run speed density, no math, no math. Okay, get rid of that junk. All right, so at this point, I uh, just talked to the customer. Grabbed his configuration, threw together a base tune based on a truck ECU, LS1 injectors, speed density, yada, yada, yada. I'm going to go flash it to his car, and then uh, we'll throw a wide band in it, and we'll get the tuning. All right. Scale tune is on here. She's idling. We got a wide band plugged into it. And we're idling away here, so now i got to cram in here like a midget. She looks good. We're gonna pull the wide band out of it. Look at what this exhaust did to my freaking lawn. Burned a big dead spot in it. Bummer. Anyway, totally stock 5.3 LS1 intake. She only came out to about 250 horsepower around 300, 300 foot pounds of torque. It's hoping to be a little higher than that, but it sounds incredibly healthy. So we're gonna go give it a road test, make sure the drivability doing what it needs to and then uh do something a little special test the durability good test went well now it's time to uh test some other things <laughs> There's three gears, She's still idling. Smooth as you can ask for. <laughs> she smoked out, but this is another one ready to hit the drift track. So now we transition to this Turbo E30. This is on Mega Squirt, so I'm gonna bring the computer out, hook up to it, and we will see what the dealio is with this one. All right, car's all strapped down. Did a base pull as the customer asked me to. And it made 245 horsepower, 219 foot pounds of torque. A little bit of a rough looking curve here. 
We could do a lot better with this. Um, torque really starts falling after 6,000 RPMs. I mean, it's pretty bad. Horsepower, hefty drop as well. We need to bring this torque up and out, bring the horsepower numbers way up here. A little bit of shimmy shimmy here. We're looking at the timing table fueling, make sure that's all good. The AFR doesn't look terrible, but there is room to improve. So let me do my thing in here a little bit, get this thing a lot closer, and then uh, we'll start uh, trying to make more power. Did another pull to get familiar with the car. This is RPM rising. This is boost pressure rising. I have an abrupt drop in boost, and she stays at atmosphere until I let off the gas. So something blew off under the hood. That is no longer connected to the intercooler. I don't know how to work on E30s. I don't know how to get to that. Kind of like tearing this dude's grill off and shit. I don't know, I'll figure it out. Worm gear thing broke somehow. Um, I gotta take this thing apart and see what the hell's going on. Gear clamps, worm gear clamps on boost components because they fail, ship blows off, you miss your seat time, you waste the tuner's time, you cause all kinds of problems for no reason. This is made in America, it's like $10. You know, spend 50 bucks, get what you need, get it done, and we'll move on. taking a look at the data here to try to figure out what this car is doing. Here's my throttle position. So at this point, I floor it. Red is the RPM. Okay, so RPM is climbing. As we expect, and all of a sudden just flat lines. And this is actually one second of flat line here. <clears throat> look down here. White is my injector pulse width. Yellow is my ignition timing. All that's hanging steady. And if you look at these RPMs, I mean, it is holding very, very steady. I'm talking plus or minus 20 RPMs. It just holds there. Full boost. It's almost 10 pounds of boost. It just holds there. It doesn't move. So there's got to be some type of ignition-related issue here. Ah, oh, man. See how these coils are cracking apart and they're not Bosch, they're probably Chinese. I personally wouldn't run these, but we'll see if we can find a find some type of solution here. It's got this one. This is out of my M52 TU. Uh, it's original from 1999. And then I got brand new Bosch boots for it. German made coils in there, German made boots, even though they're old, hopefully they do the trick. We will find out. Two TU coils seem to have solved the problem. You can see here, RPM pulls steadily all the way up to 7,800 RPMs. No flat spotting, no none of that. Boost control, the red, a little bit questionable, that's for sure. Um, but we'll get into all that. I think this thing needs a ton more timing up top. I'm just watching the timing map here. and 7,800 RPMs and 11 degrees of timing? I don't think so, but I think that's why it drops torque so hard at the end. So. I'll get into that. I didn't even get to take my work clothes off yet. It's like I get out late and I got to race home. Try to get a couple pulls in before it's too dark and too late and pissing everybody off with noise.
might just wrap this one up. Just took it for a street drive. Street manners are pretty good. Um, runs runs nice. Um, came out around 310 horsepower, 16 pounds, 290 or so at 14 on the gate, like 250, 260 or something like that. So I'd recommend this guy boost controller, set it to 14 pounds, go beat the crap out of it. Probably have a great reliable car, get plenty of seat time. So anyway, uh, I got to print him a couple dyno pages here and then uh, we'll be on to the next one. Back to the Volvo. This guy wants the Mega Squirt to control the boost. Looks like it's plumbed really nice, but it is not wired yet. So let's go take care of that. problem with the throttle set screw all that anyway just had a real scare there is fuel everywhere and it looks like something blew out of the rail or something here uh, I got pretty lucky no fire I do have my hose out here just in case but you can see here see that crappy ass rail brackets almost burned the whole thing down these little turds. I mean, you might be able to get away with these little turds on a naturally aspirated engine, but once you see pressure in the manifold and then you have rising pressure in the rail, this thing needs to keep itself down. I mean, you're, it's a quick way to fire. So let's see if we can build some better brackets for this thing. All right, here's the new rail setup. It's got these quarter inch thick brackets welded on underside and top side. My welds are trash, I know, but I get things done. Uh, this thing is insanely strong now. No chance of it swinging upwards like it was with the cheese ball brackets, letting the injectors blow out. So I got to take it back off, clean it out, seal everything up, and then we can fuel pressure test it. Hopefully that rear injector wasn't damaged in the blowout. All right, she's put back together. Fuel pressure is holding. Good news. So that totally blows. There's an hour and a half wasted, but now we'll get back to tuning. All right. Fuel system's good, but now we got new problems here. So I get the fueling dialed in. I get the timing. I play all around with that. And look at this torque curve. It just dives for the hills. I mean, it, I, I got a rev limit at 6,700. I literally can't almost get there. The engine just stops pulling. It sounds pissed. I don't know if the valves are floating. I doubt it's blowing the spark out because it makes nice peak torque. Um, I don't know if the cam timing's off, what it is. Get a pull at 14 pounds up top here. I mean, it picked up 60 horsepower. Uh, with about six, seven extra pounds boost. It carries it better, but still, I mean, still at 6,500 RPMs, we're not even making 100 horsepower. This would be a very interesting car to have a mass airflow sensor on just for data logging purposes. So like, you know, a little more boost, a lot more power. I like that, that all makes sense. This taper really hurts, but it is actually, I mean, it's tapering at a similar rate here um 
the VE drops substantially. I mean, I'm actually pulling fuel out of this thing, probably about 5,000 RPMs to redline. I have to lean it out because it's just, the, or I have to drop the pulse width because it can't take the air anymore. Uh, maybe the head's just very restrictive and we're not putting the pistons under that much load. I don't know. I don't know, I gotta think about this one. Now she's making some jam, but notice something wasn't right and we got a cap blown off of this thing. So I gotta plug that and we'll be back in business. Turned her up and the curve looks a lot better. It's not tapering as bad as it was before. Came out around 305 horsepower, 310, 315 foot pounds of torque. However, hold your breath. That's a 29 PSI. So I don't think that's right. Uh, I'm going to kick it back to the owner, let him play with it a little bit, see what he thinks about it. Kind of go from there. I did road test it. It drives really nice. It sounds incredible. It pops flames out the hood. Um, it's going to be an amazingly fun car. I just do have my suspicions that something is not moving air like it should. But anyway, that'll wrap it up for this one. Uh, that's the end of tuning for this episode. I'm actually trying to get out of tuning, so there probably won't be many more of those left unless it's on my own cars. So thanks for watching. See you next time.